a lot of people in high places had links to Jeffrey Epstein, and for many, those relationships have left them at least tainted in the public eye. Now, new documents disclosed during a New York court case brought by Epstein's victims against international finance firm JP Morgan reveal that a figure at the very heart of Keir Starmer's Labour Party was especially close to Epstein. Yes, we're talking about spin doctor extraordinaire and architect of Tony Blair's new Labour, Lord Peter Mandelson. Now, Mandelson's connection to Epstein isn't entirely new knowledge. This image emerged last year. It shows Peter Mandelson celebrating Epstein's birthday at Epstein's Paris apartment in 2007. And this image, first published in 2019, shows Mandelson out shopping with Epstein in plush St. Barts. The photo was taken in 2005, just six months before Epstein was arrested in Florida and charged with a string of sex offenses against a minor. At the time of both these photos, Mandelson was a European trade commissioner, so not exactly at the center of Westminster government. But new documents show that Mandelson remained close to Epstein even while he was a government minister. And, crucially, after the paedophile had been convicted for, for soliciting a young girl. After Epstein's 2019 arrest on sex trafficking charges, JP Morgan commissioned an internal report into the bank's 15-year relationship with him. That probe, codenamed Operation Jeep, concluded this. Jeffrey Epstein appears to maintain a particularly close relationship with Prince Andrew, the Duke of York, and Lord Peter Mandelson, a senior member of the British government. The Financial Times, who broke the story, goes into more detail about what's in that report. Now, in the extract I'm about to show you, there's a reference to a Jamie. That's apparently J.P. Morgan Chief Executive Jamie Dimon. In June 2009, months after Mandelson had returned to government to prop up the beleaguered administration of Blair's successor, Gordon Brown, he was given the additional title of First Secretary of State. Days later, Epstein wrote to Jess Staley, then his personal banker at JP Morgan. Well, for all intents and purposes, Peter Mandelson is now Deputy Prime Minister. At the time, Epstein was serving an 18-month sentence at the private wing of the Palm Beach County Stockade for soliciting a young girl. He was not released on probation until July 22nd, 2009. In the emails referred to in the J.P. Morgan report, Epstein writes to Staley on June 17th to say, Peter will be staying at 71st over weekend. Do you want to organize either you or you and Jamie quietly up to you? Now, where was Mandelson staying? According to the report, it was in Epstein's $77 million penthouse on Manhattan's Upper East Side. Mandelson has refused to confirm or deny that he stayed in Epstein's apartment that weekend. But if it happened, that's a government minister staying in the apartment of a wealthy financier while he was serving time in jail for paying for sex with an underage girl. The FT goes on to report this. Elsewhere in the emails, Mandelson, still a business secretary, messaged Epstein on March 29th, 2010, referencing an apparent health issue and adding, can Jess send me email on issues regarding Dodds Volcker, a reference to US banking regulations enacted in the wake of the global financial crisis. On two later occasions in November 2010 and January 2011, when Mandelson was no longer in government, Epstein noted to Staley that, quote, PT was with him in Paris, where the financier owned a sumptuous apartment. Just weeks after Labour lost the election in 2010, Mandelson's thoughts turned to getting rich as a businessman. And who better to ask for help than his old friend, billionaire and convicted child abuser Jeffrey Epstein? The FT reports this. On May 27th, 2010, Mandelson wrote to Epstein, this is thing I'm speaking to in Shanghai. If you can open the attachments, you'll see the entire Chinese banking fraternity is attending. Isn't it something that JPM should be represented at if they want to spread their wings in China? Epstein forwarded the message to Staley. Then in October, the Financial Times reports that Staley forwarded Epstein this email from Mandelson about his recent trip to Congo, Brazzaville. I talked at length with President Sasu Engesso, including about the above new mine. Exploration, he told me, has been undertaken by a consortium of investors backed up by JP Morgan. The government is reaching a final decision on whether to issue a full mining license. I spoke to the Minister of Mines about this. And there's more. Two weeks later, Epstein told Staley that PT is just back from Russia. On October 27th, Staley forwarded Epstein an email he sent to Mandelson that appeared to include internal JP Morgan Chase information on a deal regarding the privatization of businesses in Russia. Staley told colleagues, when Lord Mandelson can help, please let me know. 
Now, there's no suggestion that Peter Mandelson was involved in Jeffrey Epstein's sex trafficking of young girls. But the JP Morgan report is just another example of his incredible lack of judgment, particularly when it comes to the super rich. In 1998, Mandelson resigned as a cabinet minister, reportedly sobbing after being ordered to quit by Tony Blair. That was after it emerged he'd taken out a secret £373,000 loan to buy a house. And the lender? Millionaire and then Labour minister and new statesman owner Jeffrey Robinson. Then, in 2001, Mandelson quit the government again, this time over accusations he'd helped one of the billionaire Hinduja brothers get a passport in return for a £1 million donation to the government's Millennium Dome project. An inquiry later cleared him. But that wasn't the end of it. In 2008, Mandelson found himself in hot water again. That was after he was found to have stayed with Oleg Deripaska, a Russian aluminium billionaire on a luxury yacht off the coast of Corfu, arranged by banker Nat Rothschild, a mutual friend. At the time, now Lord Mandelson was EU Trade Commissioner and oversaw the EU's, wait for it, aluminium tariffs. Just to repeat that, the man in charge of EU aluminium tariffs was enjoying the hospitality of a Russian aluminium oligarch. Mandelson, of course, denied any conflict of interest. What an unlucky guy caught up in all these scandals, but he never did anything wrong. Asked about his links with Epstein, Mandelson's spokesperson said this, Lord Mandelson very much regrets ever having been introduced to Epstein. This connection has been a matter of public record for some time. He never had any kind of professional or business relationship with Epstein in any form. Oh, you regret it. I bet you do now. Notice that he doesn't say, I deny I stayed at Epstein's penthouse. Interesting. All of this would be just another sleazy chapter in the book of Peter Mandelson's life if it weren't for the fact that Petey finds himself back in Labour's inner circle. It's been reported that Mandelson has been giving Starmer policy advice, even perhaps orchestrating some of those many U-turns we've been reporting here at Navarra. And we also know that Mandelson has a close relationship with Shadow Health Secretary Wes Streeting. In 2015, Mandelson went out on the campaign trail for Streeting, even meeting Streeting's mum. And as recently as last year, Mandelson was bigging up Wes Streeting, saying this to the Financial Times, Streeting leads by values rather than ideology. That puts him absolutely in the mainstream of the British public. He's not an all things to all people politician. He's punchy, not glib. Some in the party may be reminded of an early Blair, but he's not an identical New Labour politician. He's his own man. Are Starmer and Streeting regretting that association now? Of course not. These new revelations were put to Starmer. The Telegraph say this on Labour's response. So Keir's spokesman said there were a range of people that Keir Starmer talks to, including, quote, people who were part of the last Labour government, including Peter Mandelson. Just extraordinary. This is exactly the kind of sleaze Labour denigrates when it's the Tories. Frankly, if anything, this is worse. Ash, how is Lord Mandelson Teflon? He seems to get away with crisis after crisis, scandal after scandal, and yet there's a non-trivial possibility this man, as a Lord, could be in the next Labour cabinet. The first thing to say is that different people on the Labour right play different roles. And there's a whole load of people who I really, really, really passionately disagree with on policy grounds, but who ultimately take that view because they genuinely think that's what's best for the country, that's what's best for winning elections, that's what's best for a Labour government. And that's a policy disagreement. I find the things that they stand for horrific, but ultimately you can go, all right, you stand for the things that you say you stand for. Peter Mandelson is a totally different kettle of fish in my opinion. I think that the role that he has played within New Labour and also subsequently after the end of uh, Tony Blair's governments is to be that person who is the go-between between a right-wing Labour government or Labour leadership and the money. And when we're talking about the money, what we're talking about are oligarchs who want a semblance of legitimacy, who want access to UK or EU markets. And Peter Mandelson seems to be quite happy to be the guy who helps facilitate that happening. And that's something which is really, I think, as much at the core of the Blairite project as, you know, invading Iraq on a whim or, you know, moving domestic politics to the centre. It's about having that relationship 
with oligarchic wealth. We see it in terms of the Tony Blair Institute and, you know, the various institutes that also named after Tony Blair uh, that comprise it. They've done an awful lot of work with the Saudi regime, did an awful lot of work with the Kazakh regime, did an awful lot of work with Paul Kagame's regime. And it's all about, I think, legitimizing and bringing in these sources of wealth from overseas, which are tied to very unsavory sources. Um, And I think that that's why you can see this relationship with Jeffrey Epstein, even after he's in prison for child sex offenses. It's because Peter Mandelson once more is, is, I guess, lapping up the perks that come from being that middleman between his wing of politics and the money. That means that you get to go on the yachts, means you get to stay in the luxury penthouses. And that's something which I not only think is sleazy and wrong, I do think that it smirches our politics. I think it, it undermines our democracy and it makes politics that preserve a very small number, very unsavory elites, rather than a democracy in which we all participate. And I think that this is something which Keir Starmer should take more seriously. He's not going to, because right now there isn't a political incentive to, but he should. Because if you've got one standard which says, okay, if you're Jamie Driscoll and you've been on a panel with Ken Loach, that's unforgivable. Unforgivable. You shouldn't be allowed anywhere near the reins of power. But then you can have someone advising you pretty closely who maintained a friendship with a convicted child sex offender, stayed in his house. Well, standards don't make any sense. They don't make any sense. Now, the point of the the Jamie Driscoll fiasco wasn't about how do you implement the rules fairly. It was to serve a factional purpose. But I think that it's insulting. It's insulting to the public's intelligence to have such wildly different standards of of probity and integrity. I'm not sure I agree with you. I'm not sure that Peter Mandelson would be in a Keir Starmer cabinet simply because uh, he is so widely disliked. And also there is so much for the papers to, you know, magically notice when they get bored during a Keir Starmer term in government. I think that perhaps he's most effective for Starmer where he is, which is giving advice from behind the scenes and not really being dragged into the processes of accountability that he would should he take up a formal position within a government. I said there's a non-trivial chance, so I don't think he will be, but I think there's a possibility. And uh, I think you're right, that's where he should be, Ash. But uh, it turns out he quite likes the limelight. Just to say quickly, I agree with a great deal of what you just said there. And to add, isn't it extraordinary that Peter Mandelson, who has a £10 million home, gets to pontificate on how West Streeting is aligned with mainstream Britain? What the hell would he know? The guy's been in business class and private yachts and five-star hotels the last 30 years. 